This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. It is time to get geeky, get nerdy, get gadgety. It is the awesome cast live from the Sorgatron Media Studios here in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA. Having fun here. It is episode 386 DX, we'll say tonight, <laughs> of the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the tour, video producer, podcaster, longtime podcaster, as people keep reminding me these days, uh, here with the awesome cast, the Sorgatron Media, Psychic Media Services, ready to get geeky with you with me. In studio, it's just the two of us. Okay, Missy's here too. John Chachilla. <laughs> you never get any credit. John Chachilla it's, it's, I, is I, I, here. I feel like in honor of the 386 episode, we should be like streaming at like 96 baud. We're gonna we're like. gonna render this down <laughs> to to a twenty-five by thirty-two <laughs> Uh, rendering and, for and you guys it'll on only video. be available in real audio format. Yes, only in real <laughs> audio. Only <laughs> exactly. You're gonna have to use a boot disc in order to listen to this one. Uh, but uh, yeah, you know, and, uh, and and it has to fit on a uh, 1.4 megabyte floppy. So that quality is gonna be fantastic, you guys. Oh, and it's gonna play in your MIDI card. Uh, <laughs> It's, it's copy protected, so make sure you get out your manual and look on yes. page 15, yes. paragraph 3, word 2. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, John Chachilla is a gadget guru with Big Bank International Esquire. I, wait, are we, wait, did we, what did we determine last week when we said, like, are you, you're changing positions. Are you still a guru of the gadgets? I'm still a guru of the My, gadgets. I think personally I, I don't you think are. I'll ever give up that. If you're not title. professionally, at least personally, you are a guru of the gadgets. The guru. We cannot... Uh, Turn back time on that. No, definitely not. No, the panda, the the the, the, the panda? box, the panda box has been opened. <laughs> Pandora's box. <laughs> the I, uh, the but, train has left the station. The train I don't know where. I don't station. know where you're going. With where are this. we at? Where are we at? It's the I know where we're at. It's the awesome cast, and it's over at awesomecast.com. You can join us live on the internet every Tuesday night, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, on the Facebook page for the Awesome Cast, subscribe to the podcast uh, edition of this on iTunes, Stitcher, Speaker, iHeartRadio, Google Play Music. Please, I, I want to call this out to everybody. Um, this week, uh, if you can put a review wherever, if you can put a review wherever uh, you listen to this podcast, or go to iTunes, it's probably going to be the most helpful in the long run. Uh, uh, leave a rating, leave a review, let us know, let the people out there know what you think of the Awesome Cast. Um, screen cap the review, send it to awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com or uh, uh, awesomecast on the Twitter or on our Facebook page. Just message us, and we're going to take all those entries here over the next week, and we're going to give... Wait, we don't have t-shirts. I was going to give a t-shirt to the Mayhem Show, guys. Uh, we're going to make awesomecast t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, and you're, you'll get one uh, to represent uh, there as well. I mean, you know, I've been I've been really kind of holding off making T-shirts for for the podcast, and this will make me make the T-shirts for the podcast. So, um, so get out there, leave a review. Just to clarify, this is there's going to be a T-shirt going to everyone. No, 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 no. We're going to pick somebody randomly okay. of the people that submit okay. because so many people are going to submit. We're going to have to pick uh, one. Hey, maybe we'll pick two. Uh, but at least one person will be getting an awesome cast T-shirt of some sort here uh, coming up. So uh, please, we we got to we got to tell the world about the podcast. I want to challenge the Wrestling Mayhem Show people to do it as well um, on the show later tonight. Uh, but please, uh, please do that. Please read, please review, please tell the people what you think of the awesome cast. And of course, thank you to our streaming partners, RiversEdgePGH.com. Saturdays at 9 a.m. they rebroadcast the show, and also join them on the River Talk with Brian Crawford every uh, third Sunday. Day, I will be joining for an awesome thing of the month. And chill, I'm taking suggestions for March's awesome thing of the month. 
So, so just want to put that out there. And if you guys have any ideas of what you want me to bring over to that show. Also, thanks to our other streaming partner, the 405media.com, our friends on the West Coast. I'll be heading there in about a month or so. Uh, that general area, probably avoiding the 405 actual highway as much as possible this time around. I'm going to Uber the entire time. Screw driving. But anyways, uh, <laughs> you can check us out weekdays, five days a week at 9 a.m. Pacific time, noon Eastern time. They're replaying our latest episode, whatever that might be um, there. So you can catch up on your mayhem or catch up on, on, on or, I'm sorry, awesome cast. Uh, so catch up on your awesome cast every day over lunch here in the Pittsburgh area. And thank you to our Patreon supporters uh, helping us keep the lights on here in the studio. Of course, uh, Matt Weller from the old awful show. Uh, thank you so much. Much, uh, for supporting the show at the Coffee Club $5 level, Matt underscore Weller on the Twitter, and a Michael Fedor of Mike Fedor Show on the Twitter at the Fan of the Show dollar level. You guys too can be part of the show, contribute to the show. Let us know if you're digging uh, some of the discussions we're having. Be a part of that and we do appreciate that. And you do get extra gold content. This week um, Chilla and I, uh, in honor of episode 386, um, um, discussed our first computers, um, what those may be. So we're going to leave that story for you guys on there. Check in at the $5 level. It's $5 a month also, not a week. So Not a show. Yeah, not per show. So for $5 for a month, you'll get no less than four of those uh, uh, throughout the month. And I, some, yes? I, I expect some nice like harp music like in into this week's gold to like kind of do the fade-in intro of reminiscing You're memories. You're setting some expectations, <laughs> Sheila, and a lot of work for me to do. <laughs> and that's that. What that's what that $5 a week goes to. And if we get more of those $5 a week, I'll hire somebody to do those fancy things. <laughs> There's a goal. There's our stretch goal right there um, uh, for, for that kind of thing. Yes? Uh, Producer I, Missy? But if I want to give more money, can I do that? You can give all the money you want. We do have a ton dollar level where you can get a state of the show and talk about things that we're trying to get going um, with this, future guests and the such, and also a sponsored level $20 executive producer, and you'll get business cards, longer shout-out, and uh, other goodies. They, you have the, king, the keys to the kingdom. You become pretty much part of the show, and that's perfect if you don't, you don't maybe want to be on this show because maybe you're maybe... Now, some people don't like to get behind the microphone or on the Skype lines if, if need be or here in the studio, and, and we do appreciate uh, everybody else that does support the show. So let get let, 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 let. Just yes r- oh real, yeah real quick um I, I I find it interesting that you told everyone no matter where you listen to us to go to iTunes so I think if you go to iTunes you know it is interesting iTunes is not they, they, there was a thing from Lipson where they said that if 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 the mass percentage of your of your listening audience is not iTunes you might be doing something wrong. I feel like I'm doing something wrong on every one of my podcasts because that is not the case. Uh, w- what I'd but, be interested in is I think if you listen to us on something other than iTunes and you go to iTunes to review us, take that screenshot and ma- mention what you listen to us on. I think they that's should true. Get two, that's true. I think they should get two entries. Ooh, no, if you I'll listen on an alternate system, or or I'll give you an entry for each platform that you leave a review. There you go. Is that is that is that legal? I sure. Don't copy it's and your paste rules. It. I, it is my rules. It, it, it's Sorg's <laughs> world. It's the awesome cast. Let's do it. Um, anyways, I, I, saw, I saw that. I saw that over there. That's the part where Missy just gave up on logic. Um, but anyways. <laughs> Missy has to keep track of it. Let's, we can make up whatever <laughs> That's right. Want. That's right. Remind me I did this <laughs> next week. Anyways, we did not do this in the pre-sh- pre-show meeting. By the way, we never have a pre-show meeting. Um <laughs> All right, Shilla, what are you buying when you get home so, for your awesome <clears throat> thing of the week? So Microsoft has a couple different things for the Xbox. One of them is the Play Anywhere, where if you buy a game um, on Xbox, you can run that on Windows. And if you run that on Win- and if you buy it on Windows, you can run it on Xbox. Uh-huh. They're upgrading some of their they're upgrading some of their um, games. The most recent one that I saw was the Marvel versus Capcom. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you're an owner of that or thinking about buying it, no matter where you buy it, now you get to run it on both both systems. Okay, I thought that was pretty cool. But what what really caught my eye this week is um, a company called OneCast. It's a uh, OneCast O N E C A S T dot M E um, came up with a way to stream your Xbox games to your Mac. Um, as part of Windows 10 and when the Xbox upgraded to Windows 10 as well, 
you could actually stream your Xbox to your tablet or computer. Yeah. Um, thought it was a pretty cool concept, but you couldn't do this with a Mac. So, unfortunately, I was not I was unable to use this. Yeah, as and, we are Mac people, because we are <laughs> fair-minded uh, uh, workers and, of a sort. And I have a, I have a virtual machine that runs Windows for anything I need to test on that. But mm-hmm. streaming games doesn't work as well um, when I'm trying to run a bunch of other stuff as well. Now they've actually get, they've one cast has come out with a way to stream Xbox One titles um, to your Mac OS device. Mm. Thought it was pretty cool. Um, it's a it's a if you're unsure, there, it's a fourteen there is a day free, free it, trial. Free trial. It's Let's like see. shareware back in the eighties. <laughs> yeah, and for share more shareware, you can listen to the Awesome Cast Gold at the five dollar level on Patreon dot com slash Awesome Cast, and uh, we were reminiscing about that concept and modems and such. Um, yeah, I'm downloading it right now. I don't have an Xbox One here. I have to be on the same Wi-Fi. Is that correct? Uh, from what I understand, Does yes. Does that mean I need to bring my Xbox One to the studio? Or you need to take your laptop home. I don't have a Wi-Fi network at home. Well, you just join them both to the... Same phone. Same phone. Hmm... And it's not going to tra- traverse the internet. No, it isn't. It isn't. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm not worried. I have unlimited and stuff. But, like um, that. So wait, how much is a 50% off for a limited time only? It is do do do. That price is nine ninety nine. That's all it takes to play Xbox on your Mac, Chilla. Yep. That's all it takes. And the cool thing too is they support um, the Xbox One wireless controller. So you can connect it via USB or Bluetooth and use the same fun controller that you're used to. Wait, so the regular Xbox One, it does it is USB, right? And the newer ones are Bluetooth. The new ones are newer ones are Bluetooth. The, yeah, and I think I can't, I can't remember. Need a dongle. I might need a dongle. You might need a dongle for like I think I have like an original Xbox One controller. Two of You'll them. probably need a dongle. I need a dongle. Son of a bitch. Which and they means... came out with new. They came out with new smaller dongles like two weeks ago. So. You can get a micro dongle. A micro dongle? Yes. I feel like Versus we're leaning the old, in... I guess, macro dongle. I don't know. I feel like we're leaning into a show title with this. <laughs> All right. Bookmarked for later. Downloaded here. I'll install that later. Um, <laughs> awesome. What would be really cool is if you could set up some kind of crazy contraption to actually connect your device to your home network remotely, then you could, as long as you had the bandwidth, you could... You could stream uh, from anywhere. I could see that happening. Like a like an old school sling box. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> an X sling box, maybe? An X, a sling, X, sling X? Oh, geez. I don't think I have anything for that, do I? I think I'm out of... Yeah, no, I'm out of it. Uh, anyways, um, we also have... Wait, what is this? Free... Uh, <laughs> Sorry, that's for the wrestling show. I'll leave that message for later. Um, anyway, so uh, it's, I'm flying again uh, in the next week, Chilla. Heading down to Lakeland, Florida by way of Tampa. By the way, never been to Florida before. This is never. New. Never been to Florida before. This is brand new for me. Um, and and getting into that, oh, hey, got to get into flying mode again. It's been, like I think, since June last year since I've done this. So I got to get in the way. Hey, all the anxiety is still gone. Good news. So far, at least. Um, my my anxiety is for when I get back on the ground down there. <laughs> <laughs> Which is appropriate because I'm down there for work. So, um, And we'll talk about that probably more next week uh, before or after the event. Because it's something different and cool that I get to uh, film here. Uh, but anyways, Gadget has an article about... Uh, um, oh, that's the other thing that happened this week I need, I need to bring up. On Local Focus, remember, remind me to talk about VR. Uh, but anyways, flying... With a VR headset, um, this is the HTC Vive Focus, which is, which is, I think, the more standalone or at least the lighter of the Vives, and they're um, using it apparently on flights for your in-flight VR entertainment. There's, they're talking about in this how it's not as well, the article is it isn't as dorky as it sounds, um, but also it's pretty cool because um, it's it's you know gives you. It, Gives you a whole environment when you're cooped up on that plane. Although this guy has a lot more room than I usually have on a plane. I want to point out this is definitely the. It looks this like is like an international flight. Yeah, that's one of those international flights with the cubicle system going on. I did not get this on my way to Thailand a, a couple years ago. So uh, I don't know. It's pretty cool. And, and again, the VR is uh, adding a lot of uh, uh, cool stuff. So uh, yeah, three sixty three sixty degree. Um, um, <laughs> 
videos for the most part. I'm hoping there's not too many um, you know, like Office Simulator or anything like that. They're, they're showing a, a go kart game for this thing. Um, they have a, an app library that's a part of it as well. Um, it's uh, I love this this picture of them. Um, I, I think that's, this is a China flight, I believe, that's doing this. Um, and I think that's a Beijing airport there. Uh, him like in the, in the lounge, standing up, doing the. Uh, the Vive Focus uh, situation. Um, I'm hoping there's not a lot of Office Simulator or something because I think you're just going to co- you know, completely whack like that guy sleeping next to you uh, <laughs> if you're playing something like that. So um, it's pretty cool that they're, they're kind of doing this. I mean, this, this is... I mean, we're talking about like you know VR is on, on on roller coasters and things. Kenny Wood just unveiled the uh, over Fright Nights the the VR on the Sky Rocket, for instance. And now I, I, this absolutely makes sense because there's only so much of staring that little TV on the back of the seat in front of you on an interna- 13 hour international flight. I think I can take. Although I don't think I'm gonna have a vibe on my head for 13 hours. That might might also be a little wearing as well. I'm surprised they haven't. And maybe they're out there, and I just haven't looked this up. It just popped into my head. I'm surprised they haven't done more video game emulators for the headset. So you could, it would be like sitting in your living room, right, with a nice big screen TV. I'm playing sure they're out there. Zelda. They have um, to be out there, right? That would be kind of good for those long flights. Hold on, video, NES emulator for uh, let's say Gear VR. I'm gonna do. I'm mean, just gonna do a Twitch. This, this, is there, is there any way to use how to use NES Game Boy PSP emulator with the Gear VR? Yes. Thank you, Tom'sGuide.com. Um, play Nintendo's hated Virtual B- Boy games on Gear VR. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. You got some Dr. Mario kicking. Oh, I need to bookmark this, too. We're going to put a star by that, and that's going to be for later. Uh, <laughs> can, you, can you throw that in the notes? So I <laughs> get to it later as well. Yeah, I might need to do that as well. Let's see. This is... For the later, I'm just. I mean, I, I seriously just searched like NES gear uh, emulation gear VR, and I'm sure there's probably something for cardboard as well because somebody has to be playing with these kinds of things. Um, <laughs> uh, now with less nausea and headaches, says this thing. All right, I want to talk about kind of the local side of VR in a moment because I actually had a pretty cool experience that I almost forgot about here. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm going to tell you about a pr- pretty cool experience for our tummies. That's right, I said tummies, chilla. Our good friends, you know, well, yeah, Munch Cam is on. Can yeah, I can me? hear you Munch. I, I turned the mic back That's on. That's for I was four pure sensual, uh, um, you know, it, we are not VR, but we are uh, PR, pizza reality on this show. We're showing we're showing you on the video here the awesome website and the great stuff they make at Slice on Broadway, right up here the street and on Broadway Avenue, and you can hear Chilla munching it too. It's delicious. Yes. <clears throat> Supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza right here in Beachview, right over in Carnegie, PA, down on Main Street, PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, as well as East Liberty. I drove by and saw Rico in the window, and I waved to him. He did not see me because it was nighttime. Uh, but anyways... <laughs> I'm not stalking the pizza man, I swear. Uh, but it, thank you so much to those guys for supporting the show. Support them back. Follow PGH underscore Slice on the Twitter, as well as the Facebook, the Instagram, Slice on Broadway, as well. Let them know that the awesome cast sent you. All right, so I did have, uh, like I said, I had a fun experience the other night, Chilla, where um, there was... Uh, we got a cool guest coming up this week. Um, the the winner of the uh, Social Justice Innovation Week is going to be on Awesome Chat here in the studio for uh, recording a later date. But she invited me to the um, VR meetup last Friday night at Ascender. Ascender is somebody that we've interviewed here on the show as well. Really cool. Um, Incubator, I think they're labeled as. Either way, it's helping a lot of startups and uh, uh, younger companies kind of build up over there. And it's, it's, it's pretty cool. But, uh, you know, I didn't know about this VR meetup. I know there's been, uh, I've had, had word of a few VR uh, meetups over the, um, you know, it, there's been one over at uh, Looking for Group over here in Bookline um, that, that I've attended in the past. But this was one, again, in a center with uh, Shell Games was uh, kind of the presenter here. Um, this guy uh, involved, of course, in um, Now I Expect You to Die, which is like probably one of the few hits on virtual reality right now uh, on every per, every every um, um, platform and if you're not familiar um, now I expect you to die is um, you're a spy there's more levels now but I think I played like the original one where you're just in a car on a plane and it's basically an escape room 
situation where you're you know trying to radio trying to figure out how to get out of the car if you have pulled the wrong thing like a, a, a laser will pop up and shoot you and you have to move your head and stuff like that uh but it was cool because you know a lot of the people at the meetups were um you know obviously developers more than more than enthusiasts at least and myself i'm kind of a more of a 360 video and photo enthusiast cause that kind of I'm I'm not a video game developer, but it was cool to see like, you know, step one, get one of these units. Step two, get Unity, which is very accessible for a lot of people and free. I didn't know this. Unity is free for you to use up to about $100,000 in revenue. So any kind of startup I want to make a game, try something out, put on there um, for most of the platforms other than, you know, I want to make something for uh, Apple, Android, you know, kind of things. You got to pay the developer fees, of course, but... Um, to make something important out, that, that, that's a pretty cool that you can do that. But this was the thing that, that got me. They were talking about playtesting and, and going over some of the courses for, the, you know, some of the ideas for that. Um, by the way, the, the fellow's name is Sean Patton. I believe he's a virtual reality... Um, um, Sorry, the word was just right in front of me. Uh, but he's of Shell Games, and uh, they. But anyways, they showed they showed part of their playtesting before they actually get into the 3D, develop the thing. They make the scene, especially with something where you're just sitting there and interacting with things, out of boxes. He calls it brown boxing. Okay. So you're sitting in a car, and there's a thing here, and there's a phone with a light on it. You make the phone with the light on it. Grab something from, you know, props from, um, I forget where they said they were picking it up, right? Uh, it, you know, the, that, that it makes sense. You have to move in a 3D space and have perspective, right? So you kind of, like, have somebody there playing a D&D component telling you, you hit that button, now the place is filling, filling with gas and you're dead. Like, things like that. It was pretty cool to, to think, and it makes it makes sense, right, that you would kind of develop in this way. So, um, they had a lot of VR setups. Of course, they had the I Expect You to Die game uh, set up. They also had, and, and I got there a little late, didn't have much time before the, the presentation started, like, right after I got there. I've been getting really lucky with these things lately. Uh, but they also had the new Windows um, headset as well uh, set up. I looked at it real quick. It was like a Dell as well. Um, and I think they might have had a, I think the a Vive and Oculus on hand as well. There's somebody, I think that's what the Windows one. The, the, can, the Windows one, was it like the one you could kind of see through or what, it was a full? It was a full thing. It's the, okay. it's the VR helmet, not the, the mixed reality, not the mixed reality AR thing. It was the full 3D thing. So, um, so it was cool to see that, that in person, at least I didn't get a chance to try anything. Of course, um, really good discussion there and a really cool community uh, we have around VR in, in the area too. So I say it's really accessible. I've heard about of a lot of people developing for it. that are just, you know, kind of enthusiasts and things and, and to see that. And plus, you know, probably the easiest ones to get, or maybe if you have already a Samsung, uh, uh, phone, getting the gear VR, um, getting, getting, you know, the, the PlayStation four one, if you already have a PlayStation four, I've tried Chachi's. It's just harder to develop for PlayStation, of course, because it's more of a closed ecosystem, mm -hmm. right? And and also, there are so few of these systems out there, you know, kind of saying, hey, making profits a little hard because there's not a huge installed base. It's still growing. It's still, uh, the education is growing right around it and people trying it for the first time still. Like, there's a lot of people that have never tried VR. Oh, I, I totally believe that. Thing I appreciated <clears throat> Hackers got mentioned three times in this presentation. <laughs> was there a was there a scene with oh because he was in the old school pterodactyl. he was in the old school pterodactyl one yeah yeah I yeah played that at Century Three Mall on the I third know, floor I like, never got to play it this guy was talking about day. it too he's like, he talking about how he used it back in the day and how like VR like the the concept of VR was kind of thought of in the fifties there was a version of it in like the seventies but it looked like a vice grip on your head you know the way that they had it set up it, it, it was it wasn't really a computer thing I don't think I was thinking it was just a visual thing mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know it was weird. Um, I, I'd like to kind of see a little more into it. Um, and, and kind of the idea, you know, the reason VR has jumped so much is because of cell phones. Because these things have driven screen and chip technology so small. Now when you're just putting this, this you know, bit of technology right in front of your face, you're able to put something that small into it. And when you have a helmet system that you can build around like that, that helps all of that. That's why uh, everything... The, the the scale at which they have to provide the displays for all the cell phones, I'm sure, has driven down the cost of even the displays in the, in the headset. 
Absolutely. So that was a pretty cool thing that happening uh, as well. And like I said, the conversation is going to continue here in the studio this week. Um, I don't know if we'll Facebook Live it, but it'll be on your streams here in the coming weeks as well. Um, we'll probably move to an awesome chat. It sounds like we're going to move to maybe a biweekly uh, situation for that as we as we get interviews. We get a bunch of interviews, but we'll probably step it up a little bit. Um, but we also uh, had a great discussion with Cindy Leonard with the uh, Tech Now for Nonprofits conference. Uh, I got to film the keynote of uh, a few months ago in the Bayer Center for Nonprofits. Talking about technology um, and the need for that uh, as well. That will be coming up this Thursday on your awesome chat feeds too. All right. So from there, what else do we have here, Chilla? Um, Brandon has uh, has some stuff that he contributed. He has an awesome thing of the week. Uh, that we can uh, share if we'd like to. Uh, he got a new phone today from T-Mobile. I don't know if you're, call, uh, you're, you're, you're familiar with this, Chilla, since you are the gadget guru here on the show. Uh, called the Revel, R-E-V-V-L, all caps, by the way. Um, is, is that something you're familiar with? I'm not familiar with? with the device, but I just Googled it. And I, it took me right to it. Right to the product right page. Right to the product. 32 gig of memory. Um, Probably pretty capable. Android. Who Who, who makes it? Is Revel the company, or it does it's one of those weird branded say. ones? Maybe it runs Android seven. Nice. I mean, so it's not like it's behind. Nice, nice. And anytime when somebody jumps up with that, they get to play with a little bit of new technology. So uh, uh, let us know how you like that. If you're uh, doing any cool things, uh, especially uh, uh, grab some of those AR apps and see if they work uh, pretty well on there too, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see what his opinion of it is, because only because the full price of the device is 150 bucks. Mm-hmm. Um, it's 32 gig of internal memory, fingerprint sensor, Bluetooth, Bluetooth 4.2, Android Nougat. Once again, you do not need to get a thousand dollar phone to have a decent experience these days. Yeah, that's where I'm. I'm I mean, really we, am- we need to remember that, right? It- I'm really impressed. I mean, it's a little hard to do that when you have an Apple on it, but other than that, uh, as far as Android goes, right? Yes. So. That is Advantage Android. Also, you got something called the Move Band 4 Tracker, M-O-V Band. There's no E. There's a lot of interestingly spelled things that he picked up this week. Uh, it's basically an off-band Fitbit. Fitbit, I was reading an article, I think, in Gadget Today, talking about how Fitbit's going to be uh, uh, really rolling into, one, subscription services, and they're going to be rolling out new smartwatches, which, considering I got the thing that they killed over here with the Pebble 2, the very rare Pebble 2 over here, um, that I'm going to freaking ride into the ground, by the way. Um, you know, I've been waiting to hear when, if there's going to be any worthwhile off, off Apple brand red, not $400, uh, uh, watch that I'm going to be able to pick up. I, and it really, it's not the cost. It's the, this thing lasts seven days. You, you know, get, can't you get the, the, I guess we'll call it the Apple watch og 1.5 for like 200 bucks reefer yeah but the, if you're gonna do that you might as well because it, it's not one like super slow no, so that's don't forget when the when they redid that the they have the cpu the, they they? the cpu okay and then they they did something else i can't remember the big difference between the series one and the second and series three three um <clears throat> when they came out with that that mid-series the new one was waterproof, but the old one got the new chip. Hmm. And I and I thought it got. I thought they upped it with something else too. So, so it's, I mean, to me, it's kind of. You tell me, like I said, as a bump up from my lowly old Pebble, it might be okay to get these. It'll, it'll run after a certain date too, because I'm guessing sooner or later Pebble is just gonna say no soup for you. I'm waiting for that. Um, I'm not sure if I can do voice to text anymore. Like, am I responding? I used to hit the reply and be able to say yes, no. Call me um, as a thing. On, Call on me, maybe. Simply text messages. Wait, okay, she got that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I saw the look because there was a pause and a look. I looked around if anyone would giggle. Yes. I didn't want to giggle too loudly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyways, um, no, no, yeah. I, it, it's going to be, oh, my, my watch doesn't work for anything more than a watch anymore. I'm going to have to get a new one. Um, and I'm kind of waiting for that day. So, but also, I don't want to get the new watch before I run my time on this thing. So, I'm getting my getting uh, your money's hundred and twenty dollars worth. worth out of this thing first before I want to drop another two hundred on a new watch. So, and I only have a couple of years on it. I mean, it's the way technology goes. But 
I'm well into my third year of my 6S, and I'm kind of okay. Did you get a battery replacement? No. But I'm also not anywhere outside of charging range almost ever, the way my life has gone lately. Mm -hmm. So... Until you do your marathon traveling. Until I do my mar. Oh no, no! All those batteries that we pack up for the weekends—they're coming with me. <laughs> those. When do you? When do you leave? Next Thursday. All right. Next Thursday. Now everybody knows when I'm not going to be here. Awesome. Um, because I still, be I still here. have my iPhone. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was going to say I'm, I'll still be here. Yeah, you'll still be here. What's that? I have to look around because I, I somewhere I have my Apple branded uh, battery case. I just gotta Ooh. find it. Ooh, well, well the, uh, this thing has a life proof on it, so that will not. That's fit not. In there. And while I won't need this as much for the aero design, I don't think I am definitely going to need this when we get the Baja, because it gets dirty. Mm-hmm. So it, this thing is caked with dirt, and I have to like take a Q-tip to it because it's so filthy just from being around everything. So, anyways, banana phone, banana phone. This was one of my favorite phones, <laughs> and this was, uh, I'll let you get into it. It's the banana phone from uh, The Matrix. Nokia brought back the old school, right? And they're doing it again. This this is like your anti-social media move, isn't it? The, the Nokia 8110, and yeah, it's, hey guys, it's just a phone. For all of those old schoolers and wrestling promoters out there, you can just chill with this thing. We actually should get this for the wrestling promoter we ha- we know that does a flip phone. So at least it could look a little cooler with it, especially with the yellow one. It, this <laughs> phone was so hard to find when the Matrix came out. <laughs> right. Like, in the U.S., there was like, I think T-Mobile carried kind of a model Nokia, but it was mm-hmm. like $500 and it was all metal titanium. I actually have that model by the by um i'll have to bring it in for you to see sometime um and it was black and white had it, it ran snake like a champ um <laughs> ran snake like a champ <laughs> but this this to me, i mean i don't at 100 bucks i would think about just getting this for funsies for funsies what it are you runs, it runs doesn't it run sailfish what's sailfish oh or is it running okay they call it smart feature os it's not running Android, right? It's running there. Okay, but their it's still OS. it's still kind of a smartphone esque thing, right? Like, is it going to have like hooks for social media and stuff? Like, is there It'll a be up Facebook to them if they, Yeah, if they write if they smart feature the OS. So it, 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 again, rolling back to that feature phone idea, which never went away, by the way. Do they still have tweet codes? Can you still like text? I think for the most part, I don't know how well they work these days since we up the character counts and everything. Mm-hmm. So who knows? But, but in the meantime, the screen looks nice. It, it as far as we can tell on video, right? Yeah. Wonder what, wonder phone. what the quality. Oh, QV. Oh, no, no, no. It doesn't give you the what's the quality of the camera. Um, I'm not seeing it here. Yeah, uh, yeah but, uh, but the, but the it's phone a, looks really It's a slick. two megapixel camera. So you can go all kinds of old school on your sweet, sweet banana phone there, Chilla. And that's sometimes two megapixels all you need. Sometimes two megapixels is all you need, Chilla. But anyways, uh, so, you know, get your banana phone on. <laughs> all right, let's see what else we got here. Oh, we got to put that one cast to the side because we're going to take care of that later. Oh, by the way, thank you to Andy, uh, Andy at uh, Techberg for posting that. That's where I found that as well um i see you had a link there as well i i I threw a link right below that Mm -hmm. um because right after at about that same point in time nokia actually launched i feel like this is like a throwback tuesday Um, nokia launched the communicator line which was like a thick pda style phone that was a phone on one side and the, the phone kind of opened up I think it got like four hours of battery life. Um, it was ridiculous, it, ridiculously bad on battery. Um, back when the edge network was fast at like a fourteen four <laughs> speed. That sweet edge network. And, and if you scroll down, they they have the woman that has the phones open. But if you scroll down, it kind of has the three mainstream models. And I remember people owning the one on the far left, mm-hmm. um, which was one of the first first models. But it opened up, had a full screen display, had office applications, not Microsoft's office applications. But I, I feel like we're re, 
I, I feel like we're revisiting the past or we're hitting some kind of cycle because we're some the banana kind of, phone's coming back and or I some have, some kind of paradox maybe is it, more appropriate. I have a feeling by the end of the year you're gonna see this style of device launch style, not this exact same device launch from Microsoft. Mm-hmm. So it'll, it'll be interesting to see how history repeats itself throughout this year, starting with a banana phone. Absolutely. Well, hey, uh, coming up here, something uh, uh, you know that'll bring you guys into the future of music here in the Pittsburgh area. I want to give a shout out uh, to the Millville Music uh, Fest, music, millvillemusic.org. It's coming up here as a great event that took over Millville, PA, right across the river from basically Lawrenceville in the city of Pittsburgh. Uh, and, uh, of course, Sidekick Media Services, our media arm of Sorgatron Media, is uh, it was represented there as well. We had a stage. I know there was, like, some, some jazzy saxophone stuff going on on the live stream and uh, a lot of really cool stuff, yoga, just yoga on the side of the street. Just, just, just straight up, right? Uh, but it's happening again. What's that date again? May 12th? It's in the show notes. It's it, yes, well, it I'm showing 12th. a video, so I can't see the show notes. <laughs> it, is, it is May 12th. <laughs> it is May 12th. It is Millville, Millville, MillvilleMusic.org. Great, great, great beer places all around. Grist House, I know everybody's uh, talking about, and a lot of places. Discover Millville. Discover a lot of great music in the Pittsburgh area. MillvilleMusic.org. Become a part of that. And uh, go go enjoy some something really cool our friends are doing, including our friends at Rivers Edge, PGH.com. Uh, and they, of course, are also doing the weekly uh, Millvale Minute. It's not Millvale weekly. Music Minute. It's not weekly at this point. It's a um, minute, it is I a, hear. It is a minute. It is a, the, uh, How periodic is the minute? Currently, it's it's every couple of weeks as we're getting new information and stuff coming through. Mm-hmm. As we get closer to the event, they probably will become more frequent. Yes. And one thing that I do want to push, uh, this is the first year that we are opening. Last year, obviously, we opened for uh, we opened submissions for local bands to participate. This year, we are doing like kind of like an artist's galley or gallery. That I like galley actually. Mm-hmm. Well, it's, it's, you should roll with that. We're, we're, we're closing off a street. Yes. Like we're gonna have an entire street dedicated to local vendors. So if you're an artist out there that does visual art, um, painting, sculpture, uh, jewelry, you know, fancy headbands, whatever you do, uh, head on over to the millvillemusic.org website, and there is a vendor submission form that you can check. It's in uh, the menu. And those submissions are open, I think, until the 15th of next month. So just a couple more weeks left on that. And it's going to be a really cool, nice little uh, spot for you to set up and, and sell your wares. There you go. There you go. Missy. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize this was on screen. Uh, <laughs> go check it out. So, Missy, wow, since I had this up, tell us about drones at the Olympics. Yeah, there were apparently drones at hey, the Olympics. Hey, there were drones at the Olympics. Did you Did you see the... But I'm guessing that does this have the video because I was super I think, impressed with I think it's the this quality. One here. I saw. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's a video if you scroll down a little bit on that. Sorry, yeah, I'll I think, be, I think it's a link be, to the video. Yeah, it's right there. But uh, yeah, it was crazy because I was looking. I was like, oh my god, this has to go into the awesome cast notes because that is so amazing. Um, yeah, so they did like shooting stars and stuff. They had the the drones make the Olympic rings. It was amazing and all with drones. Didn't they do like a skier and they did some different people type things? Yeah, they, they did a few different things. Um, like, yeah, there's there's the the bird, the dove that you're talking about. Uh, it's just well, yeah, we're on the on the surfboarder now here on the video. Um, again, it's pretty cool. They they show a little bit of the sequence and the the 3D uh, software that they use to kind of position everything. I think this, they, they talked about this on another podcast, and this is an Intel kind of big thing as well. Um, they actually, I think, did record this a few days before the actual event, right? Uh, and kind of played it live for for people during you know synchronized with the event. Um, but they had to um, do kind of cleanup crew because not all the drones make it, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, they had bad winds too. Did they? So I know there was. I know there were problems at the Olympics with mm-hmm. with heavy winds. So I'm guessing that didn't make for easy drone flight. Probably did not help. No, no, no. Absolutely. Well, do you remember they did this for? Yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. It's not for the, the um, Super uh, Bowl last year, right? Two Super Bowls ago. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Seventeen with yes. Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga. Oh man. 
Well, here's here's the other fun thing. Mm-hmm. They had all of these drones in South Korea. Yes. That that just in and of itself kind of blew my mind. Why? Because it's South Korea. <laughs> like just in general, like I, I associate that that part of the world with outlawing and banning everything. It pretty much, yeah. Well, that's that's North Korea, first of all. Well, I realize that. But South Korea, I would I would attribute South Korea more to China as far as technological uh ness that's a word i made well, up and that's the thing like china i would have expected it from china yeah um south south korea to have it like that integrated was just like kind of cool uh, yeah. for me like i think china got i think south korea's got a lot of proof here we're like hey guys we do stuff too hey guys, I'm um there. anyways chilla i i think i oh no, no that, that that's under me amazon bought ring yeah i was surprised i didn't this was one i didn't expect so Amazon bought Ring. They promise they're still going to support HomeKit on the Ring Pro and Flood Floodlight Cam, mm-hmm. um, which if I was a, a Ring owner, I would worry about if you're a Microsoft or a Microsoft, an Apple brand person. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I did not realize that Amazon had made such a stake in um, startup funding for Ring. Mm-hmm. So, so that was kind of a surprise for me. I wonder if this is similar to. Do you remember when we were? Uh, I I got to go to that blogger event for um, Verizon, and we found out that Verizon had kind of similar. Like Verizon had a very startup incubator sort of thing, but the idea is you're creating things things like Ring, right? That work on their network, work on like LTE, machine to machine, machine to machine, online cellular network kind of situation. Um, and again, stuff that, that that will bolster, hey, buy Verizon as a service, but also putting the technology assets behind it too, right? I can completely see, I mean, because Ring is definitely something that fits into the whole Amazon Echo ecosystem. They're obviously making a tech play. We talk about their surprising uh, foothold here in the Pittsburgh area and, and the growth that they're doing down there in South Side Works across from Pitt and CMU. Um, side note, I'm sorry, this popped in my head and I have to mention before I forget, have you seen the billboard for, for, for um, um, was it Carnegie Ro- Robotics? Yes. That says it's a robot. He looks like the um, Iron Giant robot a little bit. No. Uh, <clears throat> it was on the digital billboard on 28 when we were going uh, past Edna, uh, just about to pass Edna today um, to, to our meeting. And it says still hiring humans. Um, you, you hit like every bridge and tunnel around the Pittsburgh area. I can't. I'm like, I hit town and I'm like, I'm done. I'm going no further. <laughs> Everywhere, man. <laughs> Everywhere. This is why I drive Lyft. Other than... Other than other reasons, I love driving Lyft because it means I get to know my city. And I'm really interested in getting to know my city. This is why even if I didn't have, if I wasn't just doing it on the downtime here at the studio, I would still find time to do Lyft. Mm -hmm. So I could get out of my neighborhood. When you work only four blocks away, when you work only in Dormont and you have a train to hop on from downtown, it's nice to know the rest of the city exists. Yes. So I, 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 I'd say everybody should just drive around, find a reason to drive to the other end of the city, and and discover. You know, and it's, it's until I discovered a billboard. <laughs> Anyways, back to the Amazon thing. Um, no, this makes sense. I mean, uh, it, it fits with them. It, it, I you look think at it was, their, their delivery service. I think it fits in with their yeah, delivery the, service. Yeah, the Amazon key and everything. This, this Absolutely. I, I'm not surprised by any of this. I'm not worried about any of this, really. Um, I, I guess you could get sketchy about support for HomeKit. As long as they don't kill the HomeKit support for people that are already invested in it. Right? Yes. And I was surprised. I didn't realize that. And I remember the pitch on Shark Tank. I didn't realize it was the same guy that is now the CEO of Ring. They um, pitched it. So they pitched this. They pitched the Ring doorbell back then. It was called the Doorbot. Did they? How did that go on there? They didn't get it. They no. they, didn't, they wouldn't fund it. Was Amazon already in at that point? You think I, that? I don't know. I don't know about that. Because you don't have to win Shark Tank in order to win at Shark Tank. That's true. I think. Because, I mean, when Diamond Dallas Page went on to talk DDP yoga, I think he was more interested in, in just getting it out there. Yeah. And I'm, I'm interested, too. 
I'm interested in these. One of the things that I have yet to do is I don't have wiring per se for my doorbell. My doorbell is currently wireless, um, and these typically require wiring them in. So this is something that's going to be a down the road investment for me, only mm-hmm. because I have to get behind the brick. Um. Okay. This is this is similar. This thing. I think we talked about VR last week being emulated on your Gear VR, like a, a full Oculus thing, right? Yeah. There was the it was the ridge. Yeah, the ridge thing. So th- that's why I confused myself when I just read this. So there's a a program or a service called Shadow. And what it's going to do, and wait, this kind of sounds familiar, you guys, is it's going to virtualize high-end gaming PC on your desktop clunker, but it will set you back $35 to $50 every month. Are you, I mean, I wonder what kind of internet you're going to have. I, and obviously, you just have to have to stream mm-hmm. this. And I'm guessing you're still going to want a decent display oh of course yeah you buy yourself a good monitor or hook it up to your tv or something but um they're they're saying according to engadget here instead of that the buy maintain upgrade your own hardware you buy blade you you pay blade the company a monthly subscription to use theirs a concept similar to what nvidia did with uh, geforce now cloud service um parsec or hp's omen pcs save for the fact that uh, those three are dedicated to gaming while shadow enables you to run everything from steam to photoshop uh to a host again we mentioned on live and things like that uh, uh recently right uh, th- the concept is still there and people are still um um making a go at it uh, as they say they partnered with microsoft nvidia amd and equinix uh to create a remote Windows 10 PC that you can access over the internet is going to have an NVIDIA graphics card capable of handling 1080p at 144 hertz or 4K at 40 at 60 hertz. Man, the bandwidth on that. Um, for processing, the system relies on eight dedicated threads of an Intel Xeon processor, which is the equivalent of an... I'm getting geeky, guys, but this is important for this, I swear. And 12 gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of storage. Um, so... <clears throat> that's not bad, but if you're, well, this is interesting. If you're trying to uh, watch it on an old uh, 720p monitor, you're going to be watching the stream in 720. It's not going to over push the bandwidth. So if you're like, I grab this screen, it's a lower end one, you know, you've now de-emphasized the hardware and everything like that. Um, it, it's pretty cool. I, I wonder if we'll see... Something like this, because the the one thing that hits hit me on this was they were like, you can run games or you can run Photoshop or Street Steam. I wonder how close we are to Adobe doing the same thing, offering some kind of bundle like well, this. They have where, been a little bit, haven't they, about some cloud processing? Where they they're doing it with like the AI and some of the yeah, with the specific like tasks. I think I'm wondering how far we are till they, as part of your cloud membership or for a mere ten dollars more a month you can get x amount of time on a high-end workstation mm-hmm. to render your video or to to do some of the higher end stuff that would, yeah that, yeah that, i man i would need to see how this works with but man if you I, like I, i'm thinking about business applications for this like we're, we're looking at you know i'd love to have another editor but i need to buy a computer you know, well enough to do the rendering. We don't have a lot here. In the studio computers, we don't want to double, you know, what they're doing. You know, if, if something's going and it's a live switch computer that we use, I don't want Premiere and somebody sitting on that all day too, mm-hmm. right? Because that makes it unreliable for the other task. We have a, something like an old one PC here that's chugging along, needs more RAM. Um, and, and, you know, it's an i5 something, but it's definitely not going to do uh, decent video editing. For, for like we do here um this could be an option you know i mean when you're thinking in a world for a business that's already dropping 50 dollars a month for a license for two computers for all that software and you know you make a commitment for a year that's 35 dollars a month 50 dollars if you're using it month to month with no strings that's interesting to me and that's that's where I, I I wouldn't be surprised if we see this come up from every every company that does like the Adobe it Creative Cloud type. 
No, it looks like setups. they're doing something um, like we saw with OnLive. This is going to be very regional to begin with, right? Um, they're saying that it's going to. It launched actually in February 21st in California and will expand throughout the continental U.S. by the summer. So again, you have to have a localized server, you know, within your region, you know, whatever that is, like within I don't know the Northeast for us here in Pittsburgh, and that cuts down on you know doing this process around the world those milliseconds you're going to lose in in coordination and that also could be a killer for video editing for me i I look at it too and i can't remember it was i think maybe it was on mac break weekly or something they were talking about was it 4k video rendering with a bunch of different settings between um motion and compressor and and Mm -hmm. a bunch of work they were doing and the new iMac Pro, that's the crazy high-end one, yeah, the, the five thousand dollar and up model. They were saying something that would take someone twenty-four hours to run and render was taking them like like forty minutes. Jeez. So I wonder, even even when you think about that kind of time savings, if you could get and that's the, what was it? The, you said it was the iMac Pros. Yeah. Yeah, it's like uh, you drop five thousand dollars to do that. Yeah. Versus. But, but something like fifty this, thirty-five dollars a month. Yeah, you could you I mean, could upload the, all your work and offload how many, all your compressing. How many how many years? <laughs> you know, plus that's going to be constantly upgraded. I imagine it it becomes reasonable. It really does become reasonable when it comes to those kinds of ideas. So, uh, anyways, uh, they I they don't have a site attached here, which is weird. There's some string. Yeah, it's Shadow by Blade. Um, I guess it's not entirely rolled out yet. Um, I found a YouTube video that they put out. I found a YouTube channel that is apparently theirs. Uh, so I'll subscribe to that. Oh, shadow dot tech. If you want to check that out. So and they launched in, they launch they launched February twenty first in California. Will yep. expand throughout the continental United States. Yep. By the, end of the, year. the future of PC. Look at that sweet video. Hey, you know what's also sweet? Our good friends at Comic Book Pit. They were hanging out here on uh, this past Sunday in their sweet matching Superman shirts. They really need to coordinate these things. At least, like, get a Batman shirt, right? Um, I I want to see them come in in a Wonder Woman shirt. There there, there you go. Represent you guys. Represent you guys. Comicbookpit.com. Talking geeky uh, with you. Talk geeky to me, baby. Uh, on your podcast um, and you know talking comic books talking TV shows around comic books from guys that write and draw comic books themselves uh, really cool that they've been hanging out with us here on a regular basis thank you so much to uh, Dan and the guys there at comicbookpit.com alright one more story to head out sir I one I saw an AR, AI car here in the area I think we talked about oh, which this which one was it the Argo.ai yep. We were talking about that. Yes, they're they're around. They're around. Uh, but also, we Huawei, 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 Huawei is Huawei. also now. This is not. I, they're not really getting in the AI car game so much. But this was a show off that they were doing, right? Uh, this car with you know they have some camera and everything. And this was around. I think it's a CES, if I'm not mistaken, or no, it was Barcelona. It was actually Barcelona. They did this. Um, the AI in this car is being operated by a smartphone. It was just a a way to kind of show the uh, the power that basically cell phones have at this point and what they can do. And it's like, hey, it can run a car AI wise. Um, there's a guy. There's a flat picture of a guy with a bicycle. <laughs> Don't hit it, guys. Um, but but it was really interesting to see that. And I don't know how much heavy lifting there is for a simple course like this in the AI. They're using a... Uh, <laughs> they're using, looks like, a DSLR camera <laughs> that's hooked up as well for, for um, their their camera system. And if you've seen an AI, uh, especially here around Pittsburgh with the Uber cars, there's a little bit more to it than that, right? Um, usually it looks like a lawnmower sitting on top of... Uh, a car maybe um so oh, well, i love these i love these cutouts in here there was like a soccer ball and a, and a dog in here too but uh kind of a cool thing seeing that um and of course huawei has been kind of um i don't want to say under fire but really kind of taking shots because apparently no provider in no cell provider will will pick them up yeah and, the government recommended against purchasing those yeah, devices yeah, and then they shortly are, thereafter the the carrier's 
it's all dropped cut them. their commitments. So there's been a little back and forth. Uh, so <clears throat> kind of a disclaimer there. And uh, they, um, yeah, you know, they, they're a Chinese manufacturing company. So there's been, uh, you know, stuff going I'll, on. I'll be, I'll be surprised if we don't see a bunch of the devices pop up. Just mainly based on their, if you looked at their laptops that they announced in this last week. Yeah. Their phones are quality, and there's the other uh, Chinese company Xiaomi. Mm-hmm. Um, Xiaomi. I, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw them, those devices crop up. At least in the, if you look at uh, BlackBerry this week announced, you know, they sold 800,000 devices last year or something in that same, same number. I mean, uh, what is it? The, it's the one plus one, mm-hmm. those types of devices that aren't carrier contract or you, you can't necessarily pick up at an at and I'm guessing you're going to see more people going and at least evaluating those devices only based on cost and the 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 ever rising cost of of the main some of the mainstream devices absolutely all right Sheila. one last one last line i know i said that was gonna be the last but i wanted to touch on this real quick uh have you seen about google assistant will now launch specific tasks in android apps no is this like you can tell shlomo the apple assistant Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't want to set off everyone's assistance. Siri. You can tell, you can say like send via, send to so-and-so via WhatsApp, or I can say mm-hmm. call so-and-so and Skype for business. Um, I haven't seen, like, what is it? How far does it go down in? Well, it says for one, it says you can ask, uh, 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 assistant can ask for your location amid the conversation. Uh, if you want to get left home, uh, actions now work in uh, seven different languages. Um, they're so showing like you know things can pop up in the uh, you know of course in the the Play Store as well. Uh, actions perform uh, specific intents within other Android apps. Uh, so I mean it's it's a lot more open than Siri is. I think. I'm, I'm interested to see how it goes beyond. I don't know. I'll te- I'll, I'm interested in this. We're on in the next out. few few weeks, so let us know. Yeah. You're the one that's still dabbling in that uh, Android world yes. a bit more than I am for sure. So, all right, Chilla, ChillaTech.net, at Chilla on the Twitter. John Chilla on the Facebooks. And Sorgatron on the Twitter, SorgatronMedia.com. Around around the uh, Sorgatron Media stuff. Around the uh, globe. <laughs> we got a lot going on, of course. If you go over to SorgatronMedia.com, you can check out all the podcasts. Subscribe over to Sorgatron Media Master Feed. And you can get about everything that we're doing, including the pro wrestling stuff. The, our friends uh, Fishing Without Bait have a lot of cool things going on. We just had, had in uh, Sheena Carroll, who is a poet and uh, writer, and uh, she's done some readings. Those uh, videos available on the Fishing Without Bait Facebook and YouTube. Uh, you can go to FishingWithoutBait.com uh, and, uh, under the listen and the watch and uh, to check out the conversations that we've had with her. She's going to be on for about three weeks of that. Um, we just had on the broadcast our good friends Kim and Natalie over there. Um, they had Evelyn Costillo, who is the owner of a creative director of Sterling Events, doing some cool things um uh as well and uh we're gonna have a few we've, we've, there's been some pretty geeky things on there so uh look through that list of uh people the, the, the creator of the fish fry map has been on there in the last month i believe uh so a lot of really cool stuff and like i mentioned comic book pay, talking about kick-ass number one on their latest episode released this week and of course the scare house uh releasing a uh, uh interview they did with uh, a themed attractions legend robbie Laprie. uh of course uh robbie ween they're doing it as a benefit to her because she's having some health issues down there uh responsible for the um um the the uh terror nights i think it is at bush gardens down there in tampa so I'm, I'm going to be pretty close to that Bush Gardens in Tampa here next week, actually, Chilla. So go check it out. Check out all the cool things going on at SorgatronMedia.com. And, of course, Wrestling Mayhem Show. we got a lot of great conversations going on there as well around the wrestling world. And, of course, you can join us. If you join us here live at 7 p.m. Eastern on our awesome cast Facebook, stick around at 9 p.m. Eastern on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook for that stream as well. Thank you so much, everybody, that did join us through the night. Of course, our buddy Brandon from half a country away here. Billy, Wheels, I'm trying not to say John because that's you, Chilla. Uh, <laughs> thanks for being part of this, checking out the show, being part of the conversation. And uh, thank you, Producer Missy. There is something else that I'd actually like to mention. Oh, yes? I got a text message today. 
from our really good friend Zach Rizza over at the uh, Wrestling Mayhem show. Yes. He is doing something with running. He is running. Yes. Not for office. No, no, no. For the, for the Pittsburgh Marathon. And I'm going to go ahead and drop his uh, fundraising link. If anybody would like to donate to to his thing to support the the Pittsburgh Marathon fundraising, uh, Dick Sporting Goods Foundation Sports Matters, um, helping to save youth sports. Absolutely. That'll be in there. Go check it out. And that'll be in our show notes, I believe. Yes. And I'm also dropping it into the, the Facebook group right now. All right. Go check that out. Support our boy Riz. And, uh, oh, we've been playing. Uh, we're probably going to do it again this Friday. Uh, Riz plays games at Sorgatron Media will return, as well as Rap Gamers will be on at midnight this Friday, which technically is Saturday morning, I guess. Uh, they are going to be reviewing Black Panther as part of that, and I think playing mm-hmm. Capcom versus Marvel uh, with the Black Panther download. So oh, cool. uh, a lot of fun there for you, video guy. Uh, Friday is going to be video game night, I think, a lot of times here in the studios. Keep an eye out for those as well. I didn't even talk about Vero. Everybody's following me on Vero now. Um, I need your. I need, still, I'll have to look you up because I joined. I just joined it. We'll talk about it when, it's, when it's up and running. Look up Sorgatron on Vero. Yeah, it's not working. Yeah, I tried posting, but everybody's my friend as of today. So there's that. We'll talk about that after it's hopefully we've had a week of it working. Thank you to our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.